So how do we create animations inside of Caden Live? Well, one way to do it is obviously using the Glexamate program. I still don't know how to pronounce it, I'm just gonna call it that. So let's go ahead and create a new animation by right clicking in the uh, project folder bin. And here we can rename this animation to be whatever we want. I'm gonna leave it as default, click OK. It's gonna open up with our animation program by default. And here we can go ahead and close this. Now, obviously we can drag and drop this animation in here in our, in our timeline. And as you can see, we have a clip underneath this. And if we drag drop, uh, or drag drop time, you can see we have the created by the asylum movie introduction. And obviously, when we go ahead and click this, usually we can resize clips, but we can't extend it past its existing uh, files, its existing uh, size. So we can go ahead and change this by right clicking it. It's going to open it, but once we've, we're only opening it when we're double clicking it. So by default, now we're going to get the background footage to be the asylum presents. However, we're limited at 120 frames because we start at zero. So let's go ahead and change this. We can go to the playback and uh, no, we're going to document, I mean, go to timing. And here you can see we're at 23 frames per second. Now I'm going to set this to 24 frames per second. It has a duration of about five seconds. Let's set this to be 150. So that gives us about 10 seconds. We can apply this and press OK. And now in our timeline, we can control mouse wheel zoom to zoom out all the way and now we can scroll through it starts at one now not zero and we can get all our background footage and see what's going on and from here we can create animation so for example i'm going to add an image this image is going to be this little guy here and now we can go ahead and activate auto keyframing we can go down here to our images transform properties to the position and just slightly move it so it's automatically going to detect when it moves and it's going to add a keyframe and then we can move it all around something like this and then there we go this is basically the basics of what we're doing and obviously when we click an individual keyframe right click we can get access to the interpolation method so right now it's linear so it's, it goes from one point to the other if I set it to be fast then you can see boom it fast it goes really fast and then goes off linear so now we can set this one to be ease, um, wrong one, that's it, in, there we go, ease. Goes really fast and then it eases into the other one. So that's just how you can control the keyframe interpolation. It's something that's not too easy to do with uh, Kin Life by default uh, because we have the transform uh, property tool. As you can see now when we go back to our, the beginning of our animation, you can see all the animation we did is imported directly into uh, Kin Life and it all works out. Good, obviously we can extend this uh, this um, clip because we modified it previously. And now we get the full animation uh, of our thing. So we can do a lot of things with this. It's a really awesome tool and I'm glad it's got full integration, especially importing background footage is amazing. So now you can you know, uh, do a lot of things based on the footage, for example, following or highlighting a moment in the footage that is really easy to do. Whereas if you wanted to do this uh, inside of uh, Kane Life by default, you'll drag in your clip. This is the same image. We can go over here, we can right click, add an effect, the transform node, and this is where you'd keyframe the transform. Obviously, go down here, you'd want to move this clip automatically add the keyframe, and now we can praise and we have this. But we don't have uh, as much control over the, um, the uh, keyframe properties. We can go down here, we have, uh, let me select a keyframe. We can go down here. To keyframe interpolation, we have a smooth or concrete, so that's like a linear keyframe, it's like it jumps, or we just have linear or smooth. So we don't have as many keyframing options, there aren't uh, the ability to draw shapes, to, to, uh, to animate text and stuff like that. So, well, you can animate text by creating a text element, but using a Glassmate is just a huge a bonus it's much easier to do things in my opinion especially when you're used to things like that it allows more accessibility because it's a tool dedicated for vector-based animation or animation in general and it's much better suited for things uh, that are more complex that Ken Live can't really do on its own. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I'm glad that I can show you this tool and I hope that you really take it into account and use it in your own projects.